See if we can get this going. All right. What about angular holds? When we have positional tolerance to anything that is has an angle, we have to have that angle in a basic dimension because that's also orienting it. So I think this is really interesting that the center axis of this is the datum, right? Because that's on a feature of size. So the center axis is what this needs to be dimension to where this pin crosses this center axis is this far from this datum. How hard would that be? That would be hard to inspect in my eyes, but maybe you have a, you have a fixture that's a pin and it has a hole in it at absolutely 30 degrees that sits on this plane and it stops right here. So this pin would stop right here at this axis. So notice how we don't, we aren't actually dimensioning where the opening of the hole is. We're dimensioning where it intersects this axis. So in certain cases, the function of a part may require that the pattern of holes that are not parallel or perpendicular to, to datums be located and oriented relative to a datum reference frame. So here are the conditions. What are our virtual condition pins? They're 5.6. It's 6 minus 0.4. It always gets smaller. When a pin has to go in a hole, it has to get smaller to get in there with the worst case scenario. The virtual conditions are at basic 30 degrees to datum B. The virtual conditions are located at their true position. And the surface of each hole may not violate its virtual condition. It locates the location, it uh, limits the location, orientation, and spacing of these four holes. So you see we have a 4x on this. Wonder why we don't have a 4x on this. I think we should on this basic dimension right here. Because all four holes have to hit that. Um, sir, let me see. The maximum bonus is 0.2, so it's the difference in the height, the MMC and the LMC is our bonus. Datum feature shift is not allowed. It's because datum A and datum B, datum A is the only one that's a feature of size. So that's the only one that could be MMC and a fixed gauge but it does not have an M, a maximum material boundary modifier here. We don't have that there. So we can't have any datum feature shift. It also does not allow us to make a fixed gauge for datum A. We have to measure this every time to find its axis. Um, rule number one applies to each hole and each hole must be within its size limits no matter what. So, what is the what is the overall tolerance? What is the let's see the virtual condition acceptance boundary is this. So the hole could be at any of these sizes, and the tolerance allowed. Let's say at six we get zero point four tolerance, right? And at six point five we get, I mean, at 6.1, we add the 0.1 to it. That could be 6.5 and 6.6. .6. So the total tolerance here is 0.2 right here in our bonus plus our positional tolerance. So it's 0 0.6. All right, let's see. Positional tolerance, bidirectional. Now, I was thinking about this because like on the side frame and the, and the uh, camshaft, the crankshaft support, the dimension from the bottom of the part is most important. And I may want to hold that really tightly where the dimension from either side doesn't really, doesn't need to be held that tightly. So this is pretty interesting. I could put a dimension from the bottom and put its feature control frame by the dimension and then put one, a feature control frame beside the dimension 
one in the X and one in the Y. And that's what this is doing. So what we have is um, we're allowing this to shift. It can't shift up and down very much before it breaks out. So this one's pretty tight. But it can shift a lot more in the X. So they dimension these. They have the hole separately. But then they dimensioned like the distance. They put something over the distance and then put a position over that. And you would think that you would put the, the positional tolerance on the vertical distance or the horizontal distance. But they actually measured, put it on the feature like you're calling out a feature of size. So what this does is it creates a bi-directional positional tolerance where the location is defined with different tolerance values in two directions. So you have two positional tolerance feature control frames to indicate the direction and the magnitude of each location. Bidirectional tolerances result in non-cylindrical tolerance zones. Notice that we don't have a diameter here or here, and it makes a triangular pattern. It's wider in the uh, X and shorter in the Y makes a diamond, I mean a diamond. For the virtual acceptance boundary. So what would it be in the Y? Well, we have to get to our smallest hole for our pin minus 0.2. So that'd be 15.4 in the in the Y. And then we get to the smallest pin 15.6 minus 0.6. So it'd be 15 in the X. So a smaller pin, a smaller virtual acceptance pin allows more freedom of movement. Um, the next one here is on a slot. Positional tolerance is MMC um, applied to elongated or slotted holes. Where positional tolerance is applied to an elongated hole, it's often applied at MMC because it's like a clearance hole. When tolerancing an elongated hole, two positional tolerances are, are usually used. So we're locating with, ba with basic dimensions, as you see. And then we call out the size, and then we put the positional tolerance on this one. And notice that they're saying boundary here and this one as a boundary. And that means it is a surface interpretation. We can actually use a boundary. A boundary is a key word used when positional tolerance to denote uh, with positional with positional tolerance to denote that only the boundary interpretation meaning the surface interpretation exists for this. There is no axis interpretation. Well, we've got the MMC modifier so that we know that that's a boundary interpretation anyway, right? Because we can make a virtual pin and our slots must fit over that boundary or that surface. So pins are used to simulate the virtual condition acceptance boundary. So what would it be here? It'd be four in the Y and 10 minus 1, 9.9 .9 in the X. No, 10 minus 1. So 9 in the X. And your radius stays the same. So this is going to be a full radius, a full R. Now, yeah, see, they don't even say what size that is. Elongated holes must be within their size limits and not violate their surface or boundary, the boundary of this acceptance pin. Positional tolerance MMC used in a symmetrical relationship. Okay, here it is, guys. This is what we've been seeing all this time, and they haven't talked about it until now. So when you have a feature size datum or any datum that's in the middle, 
let's say this feature of size is the datum, and that means the center plane interpretation is used here. So we're trying to locate this around a center plane. And it's supposed to be symmetric. So notice that we don't have a dimension coming from the center over to one side like we normally do in XY tolerances just to locate one side. And then you have your overall dimension for the other side. So we don't go from the center over to one and then from one to the other. This uh, implies symmetry about this midplane. And we don't have to say anything about that. When you have a datum that's right in the middle of something and it's symmetric both sides to that, you don't have to give another dimension here. You just say that it is um, equally disposed around each side of datum A. If that makes any sense. Notice that we don't have a diametric tolerance zone here. We can make a fixed gauge, and that would be 12 wide. And then we can have datum shift because A is a feature of size. So if it, this actually came in, if we had a fixed gauge at 18.2 like this, and then we had another little piece that stuck out for a virtual condition. And then we this part was actually made at 18.6. This, this part could shift around in, over this fixed gauge. Does that make any sense? So when you have a feature of size datum, you can have datum shift if it has the maximum, mater, maximum material condition modifier. So since this is a negative space, our maximum material condition is thought to be, and this is kind of weird to me because I think the, the wider this is, the more material you have. But it is a negative space inside here. So the MMC would be this. So 18.2, and if it's created at 18.6, you can see that it could shift from side to side. And especially if this was created at 12.6. So you have some space on each side and it can shift. And that's okay. Positional tolerances are used for tolerance symmetrical relationships in many industry and, uh, applications. So once again, if it's centered around something, we don't have to put a location for the start point of where that feature is located. Positional tolerance when the functional at LMC. Okay, so here's another thing. We've talked about MMC, and we use that on clearance holes, and that's for assembly features, mainly for assembly, because as a hole gets bigger, you know, the, the position can shift around more, and the threaded bolt still fits through it and hits the threaded hole. But like on threaded holes, we never have MMC on that. That's regardless of feature size. When we're really trying to align things, we use regardless of feature size. What does that mean? We don't have any modifier right there. When we have no modifier, that's rule number two. Rule number one is perfect form at MMC. Rule number two means I don't care what size it is. It has to stay at this tight tolerance because I'm trying to align something. At MMC, we're trying to allow it to move more. At regardless of feature or size, we're keeping, no matter what size it is, we're keeping it at that tolerance to keep it tight. That's the most expensive one. Now, LMC is what we use when we are concerned with the minimal distance on a part. We could be concerned in breakout right here. So I was going to uh, show you guys something. If I had a sheet metal hole, and this is the edge of the sheet metal, I grew up with the rule of two times the thickness of the sheet metal is the minimum distance that I can ever get to the edge of the part. 
just because sheet metal can be torn out very easily. So least material condition of a hole is the largest hole, right? So let's make this hole this big. Well, I better have two times the material thickness here at the largest size, and it better not move very much over here and take up that two times the thickness. So at least material condition, this is our tolerance. So when the hole is at the largest, that's our tolerance. We're trying to keep that tight because we don't want it to move over here and break out the edge of the part. However, when the hole gets smaller, it can move more and not encroach on our two times the thickness because the hole got smaller. Does that make any sense? We're just trying, uh, when we say uh, least material condition, we're talking about the largest feature of size that's taking out material. So at the largest hole, we don't want it to move a lot because it could break out over here. As the hole gets smaller, it can move more and not break out. All right, so we're worried about minimum wall thickness, usually when we have an LMC modif modifier. So the three that we have is MMC is for clearance of assembly holes. As a hole gets bigger, it can move more, right? Because at MMC, that tolerance is tight. At the, at the smallest hole, the tolerance is tight. As a hole gets bigger, it can move more. At regardless of feature or size, it's expensive, but it keeps everything very accurate for alignment. At LMC, the largest hole needs to be tight so it doesn't break out the side of the part but as it gets smaller it can move more and still not break out the side of the part those are the three modif modifier conditions that we want to think about that's the three ways that you use the modifiers and depending on the application that you have Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and stop this real quick.